This PC build series is brought to you by Antec, Apotop, and Patriot Memory. Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and it's time for part 11 of my $500 triple boot PC build series. In this video we will be installing Windows 10, but to do that we first have to download the Windows 10 technical preview, which you can do by just firing up your preferred search engine and looking for a Windows 10 download, and you should be able to find the official download link for the ISO file. I used the 64-bit version of Windows 10 because we do have more than 4 gigs of RAM, which would need 64-bit to fully utilize all of it. Once you do that, it's time to prepare our USB drive, as this PC does not have an optical disk drive. So to do that, you could just look up Windows 7 USB DVD download tool, download it, install it, and then simply go through the steps, choosing the ISO file as well as your flash drive which for me is a 64 gig Kingston HyperX USB 3 flash drive, which is very fast, fortunately. So it makes this entire process pretty speedy. And before we actually boot the USB flash drive, we might as well go ahead and download some of the drivers after we install Windows so that all of the hardware is working properly within that operating system. So you can just look for your motherboard on MSI's website and then go to the downloads tab, which has all of the drivers for our OS. Although you do have to choose Windows 8.1 64-bit, everything still works fine inside of Windows 10 64-bit. And then I actually transferred those drivers over to the Windows 10 flash drive so that I don't have to copy them over afterwards or download them from the new PC itself. By the way, all of this was done on my personal Windows desktop, which is running Windows 8.1. After that, it is time to fire up the new PC and boot from the flash drive, choosing the UEFI option for the flash drive. Once you're at the Windows 10 install screen, we need to bring up the command prompt, which is done via Shift F10. And then we do have some commands that we have to run to prepare our SSD for all of the future partitions so that Windows OS 10 and Linux can run side by side together and boot independently just fine. So the first command is disk part followed by list disk. Then we just have to select our SSD, which in my case was disk zero. We then have to run the clean command, which is essentially a factory reset command for the drive. Next, we have to convert the drive to the GPT partition scheme with convert GPT. Next, we have to make our EFI partition for the Windows and other bootloaders, which is done with create partition EFI size equals 250 to make it 250 megabytes. Now we have to format that partition, which uses the FAT32 file system, and we'll give it the label of EFI to make things easier down the road. Next, we have to make a recovery partition for Windows, which is done through create partition MSR size equals 128. We'll do exit once to exit out of disk part, and then exit again to exit out of the command prompt. And then we could go ahead and go to the next couple of steps for the Windows 10 installation process. So after you accept the agreement, we can go ahead and make the rest of the partitions for the entire build, which includes our Linux partition as well as our OS 10 partition. So for the Windows partition, I gave it the majority of the space, being 148.2 gigabytes. I wanted Ubuntu's partition and OS X's partition to be exactly 15 gigs and 60 gigs respectively, which gave the rest to Windows, which in this case made it 148.2 gigs. Don't worry about formatting the latter of the two partitions, just make sure that your Windows partition is formatted. The installer should actually do that for you. And then from then on out, it's basically a standard Windows installation. For me, it took less than 10 minutes from start to finish from booting the flash drive to being at my desktop and installing drivers, which you can see the driver installation process on your screen right now. And that's really it as far as the Windows 10 installation goes. It's aside from the command prompt stuff at the beginning of the video, which is not normal if you're only using one OS. It's a pretty straightforward installation and Windows 10 boots very quickly, which is nice to see. So that is it with part 11 of the PC build series. In the next video, we will go ahead and install Ubuntu 14.10. So stay tuned for part 12.